Manchester United have a net spend of £479 million in the last five seasons. That's more than any other club in the Premier League, even more than the oil club Man City. Cheers. Thank you. Well, at least Man City has a Champions League and multiple Premier League titles to show for it. All Man United have is the mighty Carabao Cup. Yikes. For the upcoming 23-24 season, it is time for someone to come in who can bring in the right players and take the fight to Man City. And that someone is me. Time to fix Man United. Pre-season has officially begun. The lads are back in training and it's the perfect time for me to come in and observe this team and figure out what we need to do. To be honest, after assessing this squad, I'll tell you this. Forget winning the Premier League if we don't make signings and improve this team, getting top four is going to be difficult. We've got Man City in this league who are just unbelievable and continue to improve. Arsenal are levels above us as well. And this season, I'm sure we're going to have Liverpool and Chelsea back in the fight. To get Manchester United back on track, we need to make signings. If you haven't noticed already, yup, David De Gea is no longer at Manchester United. The board decided to not renew his contract, but that means we need to bring in a replacement. And apart from that, I would love to have a new striker because I don't think we can rely on Anthony Martial up top. Apart from that, this team is actually pretty good. Bruno Fernandes is, I think, really, really solid. Marcus Rashford, if we can get the best out of him, I know we're going to succeed. The same with Anthony. If he can just be more consistent, I think we'd go ways with him. Plus, we've got a World Cup winning duo at the back. Like, come on. There is talent, but there are gaping holes that we need to fill. Okay, I've just got a message from the board and I've just realized I'm going to have to deal with the Glazers. Oh, no. No. Welcome to the world's most marketable club. Of course, what was that thinking? The Glazers were going to start with that in their email. We really think you're the right guy for the job. Now, let's talk business. All we want is Manchester United to remain a money-making machine. And for that, your objective for the season is to qualify for the Champions League. And maybe a trophy here or there to just keep Bruh. the fans happy. Wow, guys, that is Glazers for you. That, this is why Manchester United new owners who are more passionate about the club. Like, there is literally no ambition. But don't worry guys my goal is to get manchester united to the very top not just of england but the world but the truth is for that i'll need their backing i'll need money from the glazers and i'm just hoping they give us that the rest will manage your budget for the season is going to be 120 million and that should be enough to achieve our goals okay honestly guys 120 million that's that's good they can keep their objectives we'll try and focus on winning the big trophies and with 120 million we can bring in a striker we can bring in the De Gea replacement and everything should be fine. But wait, what? 60 million? Wh what, what just happened to our budget? Did I, did I miss something in the email? P.S. The board decided to help you out by signing Mason Mount for 60 million. We believe with his English fan base, he can sell a lot of shirts. But that money is going to be coming from our transfer budget for the season. So you have 60 million remaining. Absolutely brilliant, guys. We've Bruh. got 60 million to work with and Mason Mount at the club, which honestly, I'm not too sure about. We've already got Bruno who plays in a very similar role, it's going to be a bit hectic to try and fit Mount into the team. Like, no disrespect to Mount, I think he's a very good player, but we had more pressing concerns in terms of a goalkeeper and a striker. <sighs> if we want to take Manchester United to the top, we're going to have to fight not just against City, Liverpool, Arsenal and all, but also the Glazers. My first job is to fit Mason Mount into this team, and I think the best way to do it is give him a bit of freedom down the left side in the midfield and make Bruno play a bit of a defensive role. I'm just hoping it works with Casemiro holding in the middle, it probably should. But most importantly, before the season begins, we need a better keeper. I'll be real, I do not trust Dean Henderson to be our number one choice. We need someone better. But with just 60 million left, it's gonna be tricky. There are a lot of rumors about Andre Onana joining Manchester United. I can see why. He had a stellar season for Inter, guiding them to a Champions League final. If we can have him in goal, that's gonna be a very reliable keeper. And maybe that's exactly what we need. Since his contract was expiring, we had the upper hand during negotiations. All right, we can take advantage of this by trying and getting him for as cheap as possible. Maybe 23 million? That would leave us with a bit of cash for a striker. And yes, it's worked. There was no hesitation from Andre Onana. He wanted to join Man United. With that, we make our first signing, Onana, for 23 million. At least we've now got the goalkeeper position covered. But the truth is, we really need a striker. And with 33 million, it's going to be tough to bring one. 
The only real option I see for now is Mehdi Taremi. He's been linked to Man United. He's got some good stats all round. Six foot one. He's the kind of player that can maybe get the best out of Rashford and Anthony. And with the current finances of the club, this might be our only choice. Unless I'm able to generate some money. If you look at this team, there are so many players that I'm okay with letting go of. Like maybe Harry Maguire, of course. Alex Telles as well. Eric Bailly too. If we can just sell all of the dead wood at the club, but maybe, just maybe, we'll have the budget to bring in a striker that can win us the big trophies. But honestly, days were going by, and we weren't getting any good offers for our players. Guys, we're almost in August, a couple of weeks for the Premier League to begin. Literally nobody has bought our dead wood. I'll be honest, guys, selling those players, I think is gonna take a while. So we have a choice. Do we go for the short-term option in Mehdi Taremi, or do we wait until we see some player sales, and maybe in January, we move in for a striker? It's match day one of the Premier League, and we still have not made the decision. I'll be honest, guys. I don't really believe in Taremi. He might give us just one or two good seasons, but that's it. But if we can sell players and then bring in a superstar like Kane or Ossiman or someone of that caliber, we'll instantly become a potential Premier League winning team. The big question I have is whether we can survive the first half of the season with Anthony Martial leading the line. So I guess it's time to find out in our first Premier League game of the season. But moments into the game, literally the worst scenario in imaginable happened. Ooh, that's a rough one on Martial, and oh no, he looks injured, and it looks serious. With Martial's injury, we had no striker to sub on, and of course, our opponents took advantage of it, and we actually took an L. We just lost a newly promoted Sheffield United. This was embarrassing. To make it worse, Anthony Martial was out for the next three months. I really don't think we're in the position to wait any longer. We've just got to spend this money that we have and bring in at least someone who can do the job. And so for 20 million, we bring in Mehdi Terren me from Porto. Let's just hope he can do a better job than Wout Wekos. With that, we were done with our transfer window. I'm not gonna lie, I think we've had a massive L in this transfer window. I just wasn't allowed to bring in the players I wanted to bring in. And this kind of scenario is something Man United have had for quite a few years now. But hey, I can't complain. If we can still have a successful season, we'll get money for the next one and then we can make the improvements. Even with all the chaos, I think we're Manchester United and we should be aiming for being in a title race. It was now time to see if we made the right choice in signing Taremi. Although his finishing was a bit sus, but Taremi's presence alone was freeing up Marcus Rashford. Oh, look at the amount of players Taremi has attracted, and there's the release for Marcus Rashford, who's bringing the ball inside. Still Rashford, still he goes, and he scores! The signing the Glazers made for me, Mason Mount, also proved to be a pleasant surprise. Mason Mount... Mason Mount, we know he's got a great shooting technique and that is just unbelievable. Okay, guys, I think I owe the Glazers a bit of an apology. Mount actually works in this midfield. Bruno, Casemiro, and Mount actually are a fantastic trio and they complement each other well. Even though we didn't have the best squad possible, with the limited resources we've got, we're doing a great job. But now we're up against Man City. And if we want to be involved in the title fight, we need to get a result against them. Andre Onana was literally keeping us alive in this game. But ultimately, Erling Haaland was just unstoppable. Uh, that game against City was so frustrating. If only we had a striker like Kane or Ossiman, I think we'd be able to compete against Man City. You guys saw how Haaland bullied us. We've made it to January and we're fifth in the Premier League. Most definitely outside the title race, but even finishing top four, it's gonna be a real task. Honestly, guys, if we can just sign a new striker, I really feel we can get things back on track because the rest of the team is honestly doing pretty well. Finally, we were able to sell some players like Van de Beek to and Harry Maguire to Leicester City. But we were only able to raise our budget to about 33 million. Honestly, guys, I don't know why it's been such a struggle to offload the Deadwood. I think now I understand why Man United's net spend is so high. They buy the players for crazy valuations and later on fail to sell them. Anyways, it's looking like we're gonna have to wait till next season before we can actually sign a proper striker. The fact that signing a striker in this window will not be an option has got me really scared. I honestly don't feel like we'll be able to put up a fight for top four. But just as we were losing all hope, there was an opportunity. Oh my god, guys. Harry Kane is available for a pre-contract. He's not signed a new deal with Spurs. Oh my god. Can we convince him with our project? I know he'll only join us next season, but this could be huge for us. The negotiations actually went pretty smoothly with Kane. He was more than willing to join Man United. Oh, but he did want a signing bonus. With that, everything seemed to be set. Kane was ready to sign the contract and join us next season, but he had one condition. 
question. And that was Manchester United needed to be in the Champions League next season. If not, this contract is null and void. This season, we're not going to win any trophies, but we can build for the future. We're going to do everything possible to secure Champions League football, so we've got Kane in our starting 11. And that was just the motivation this team needed. Seems like Marcus Rashford was already excited to play with Kane. Rashford gets the ball, strikes it well. Oh, what a finish. I'm already thinking how good Rashford and Kane can be together. In the second half of the season, I also made one more decision, which was to play Garnacho more often. Oh, Garnacho's pace is actually brutal, man. He's so quick. And there's Garnacho for you, a super talent emerging. Honestly, guys, Garnacho is insane. We've got to make him a starter, even if it's at the expense of Anthony, who just hasn't seemingly clicked. We've made it to almost the end of the season. And would you believe it? We are fourth right now after 37 games. But Chelsea are just one point behind us. And of course, it's written in the stars. Final game of the season, Man United versus Chelsea. By the way, it's not just the Champions League at stake here. Remember, Harry Kane won't sign with us unless we're in the Champions League. We have to beat Chelsea if we want to take Man United forward. Just a few minutes into this game, we had a chance. Taremi's done well, goes for goal, but he puts it wide. We're missing a striker, man. That's why we need Kane. But there was no way Rashford was missing out on Champions League. Mason Mount sees the run of Marcus Rashford. That was brilliant. Go on. Rashi has to score and it's a brilliant goal. Yes, guys, we did it. We managed to finish in the top four, which means we're going to be in the Champions League next season. With the signing of Kane, potentially more improvements, we can finally take Manchester United where they belong. Season 2 begins with Harry Kane arriving at Manchester United. I still can't believe he's here and we've secured him on a free transfer. Gotta say, the squad morale has never been higher. With Harry Kane coming in, our attack looks absolutely perfect. Marcus Rashford who's seemingly getting better and better. And a young Garnacho who's ready to take on the world. Plus, we've got a midfield that's really gelling well together. And I'm pretty happy with our defense and our goalkeeper as well. If we get a bit of backing from the board this season to spend more and just build a balanced squad, I don't see a reason why we can't go for the Premier League as well as the Champions League. But here we go. I get an email from the Glazers and this is never good. Hey Sid, we congratulate you for the season you've had. Qualifying for the Champions League has really brought in money and that's made the shareholders happy. And we've got to give you credit for signing Harry Kane. The amount of shirts he's selling, it's awesome. Those dividends are going to look real nice this season. Moving on to our objectives for the season. Just keep doing you. As long as you keep generating us money, we're happy. To improve your team for the season, we're given you a good budget of 40 million. Since we signed Kane, this is all we can do now. Of course, man, the Glazers have ended up not backing us. Like, honestly, they're just happy qualifying for the Champions League, getting a bit of the TV money and all, and that's it. About 40 million is our budget. Like, honestly, what can we even do with this? I really thought we could maybe get a better centre-back than Rafael Buran, because he's getting old. Looks like we're gonna have to postpone that. I don't even know when. But even though we haven't got the backing from the board, I really feel with Harry Kane coming in, we have what it takes to become Premier League winners for sure. Another Premier League season is about to begin and we're facing Spurs to start things off. It's a big night for Harry Kane playing against his former club on his Manchester United debut. But we signed Harry Kane for a reason. Garnacho feeds the ball for Kane. Harry Kane goes for it and scores on his debut. Garnacho's pace is actually ridiculous. He cuts it back for Kane who gets the loose ball and scores. Harry Kane was literally the missing piece of our puzzle. He was literally scoring in every game for us. But if we want to win the Premier League, we need to be able to beat Manchester City away at the Etihad Stadium. Last time we faced Man City, they had Haaland and he destroyed us. But this time, we've got Harry Kane. Oh, Harry Kane is somehow broken through. Does he have the pace? That was a lovely touch. Harry Kane against Man City and he's actually scored. These are the games we've signed him for. Harry Kane was making the difference in every game for us. With him, it really looked like we could win the Premier League. They're not Nacho looking for Harry Kane. He's broken through again. And there's the finish. Halfway through the Premier League season. And it really looked like we could win the Premier League. We're top of the league. Four points clear of Liverpool. This could be it. But would you believe it? Just as everything was going well, Harry Kane had broken his collarbone. And he was out for the next eight weeks. Is this the curse of Harry Kane? Is this going to be the reason why we don't win the big trophies this season? Because now without Kane, we're going to have to play Taremi there. And I'm not confident with Harry 
having him in the team. Without Kane, we proceeded to get knocked out of the Carabao Cup, even the FA Cup, and to make it worse, we even got knocked out from the Champions League. Just two months without Harry Kane and our season has completely crumbled. Harry Kane is back now, but I'm starting to believe in the curse of Kane. Is he destined to never win trophies? Because my god, what is this bad luck? Would you look at that? Liverpool have leapfrogged us in the title race. Our entire season now rests on the Premier League. With Kane back, we do still have a chance. We can't believe in the curse of Harry Kane. Come on now. This is it. The Premier League title decider. Manchester United versus Liverpool. We've had a horrendous last couple of months getting knocked out from all other competitions. But if Harry Kane and Manchester United can win this game, I think we'll win the league. Harry Kane, that's a lovely ball. And Harry Kane gets the job done. There is no such thing as the curse of Kane. Kane, you can't control him. You just cannot control him. Kane has scored possibly the title winning goal. And yes, guys, it's done. After almost a decade, we've made Manchester United Premier League winners. The Glazers did back us, but regardless, we pulled it off. And while the team were enjoying the celebrations, I was out here thinking about next season. Even though we won the Premier League last season, on the other side of Manchester, City managed to win yet another Champions League. And because of that, all the media talked about was how Manchester City were the best team in Europe. And nobody cared that we had won a Premier League title. This season, though, we've got to take the fight to Man City. I know we beat them to a Premier League title last season, but this time, we're going to try and win the treble, and that should get us above Man City once and for all. But honestly, I think to do that, we're going to need to make some slight improvements to this team. I'm not talking crazy stuff. Our attack with Rashford, Kane and Garnacho, we saw how good they were last season. I'm pretty happy with Mount Bruno and Casemiro. Onana in goal is fantastic, but I really feel we need a better defender than Varane, simply because he's 32 and he's only gonna get worse from here. Would you look at that? We've just received an email from the Glazers. Are we gonna get disappointed for the third time in a row? Congratulations on winning the Premier League title. Honestly, we never expected that. Thanks to you, the share price of Manchester United has gone through the roof. Just keep doing what you're doing, buddy. You're making all the shareholders very happy. For the upcoming season, because we're champions, we're going to have a conservative budget for the season. I think giving you 30 million should be fine. Your team is already incredible. Of course, man, the freaking Glazers. Honestly, they've literally given us nothing from the start. And once again, they're doing that. We've literally built up players from the ground up. We've taken Luke Shaw, Lisandro Martinez, Dalot, Bruno, Cassie. Casemiro, Garnacho, even Rashford to another level and that's the only reason we're competing. If you think the Glazers should be out of Manchester United and they should get better owners, subscribe to the channel because why not? I'm trying to hit a million subscribers and that could really help me. I'm sorry guys, if we need to win the Champions League, the Premier League and the FA Cup, we literally can't go into the season with just two centre-backs. We need another one. And if that means sacrificing a few players, so be it. I didn't want to do this guys, but we had to sell Jadon Sancho. The board gave me this as an option and we decided to take it because the money was good. But I don't really know where he's heading. Brilliant, guys. We've just strengthened one of our rivals. Jadon Sancho is heading to Arsenal. The next player we sacrificed was Anthony Martial. We had Kane. We've got to Remy. It was okay to let him go, but he's joined another fellow Premier League club in Nottingham Forest. We did what we have to do and now we've got 110 million. Surely that's enough to bring in a quality centre-back. And I'm thinking, let's go big with Edem. Militao. What on earth is he doing in Spurs? Maybe Harry Kane can give him a phone call and tell him how much better it is at Man United. Before that, we need to strike a deal with Spurs to get him to, of course, Manchester. 90 million is my offer. They want 107. We can't do that because we need money for his contract. I'm going to try 95 million and see if that's possible. Ah, oh, these guys are playing hard to get. Come on, Spurs. 97 million is good money accepted. Oh my days. All right, 100 million. You're not getting a any more than that. Come on, there you go. Harry Kane probably told Millie Dow something because as soon as the transfer negotiations were done, Millie Dow decided to sign for Manchester United and he's just been unveiled as our new star centre back. With Millie Dow in the side, I really felt like we had the squad to do it all. While we were already done with our transfers for the season, Pep Guardiola was up to something. Man City have just signed Rodrigo, Jude Bellingham as well, and to top it off, Ronald Araujo as well. We literally beat Man City to a 
Premier League title, they go ahead and still win the Champions League, yet they improve their team like that. How are we supposed to compete? We're facing Man City in the Community Shield final. It's the Premier League winners versus the Champions League winners. Oh, we've given way too much space for Jude Bellingham. He strikes and scores. Oh, Man City are just making it too easy now. Finally, we managed to get a goal back with Rashford, but it looks like our goal only managed to make City more angry. Oh no, it falls for Phil Foden. Good save, Onana, but no! Come on! Look at that, I'm constantly pulling his shirt. I can't get near him, and Jude Bellingham strikes it home. Get me out of here. This Man City team is monstrous. At the end of the game, we had conceded six goals to this Man City side, and I realized from that game, if we're gonna have to take this battle to Man City, we're really gonna need to up our level. And since we can't do it through signings, this team is gonna need to step up. Thankfully, we started off our Premier League campaign well, and Garnacho was on fire. I don't know if that was Garnacho or Leo Messi. Harry Kane too was scoring the goals. But don't forget about Marcus Rashford. Oh, that's just super. Rashford is still that guy. The trio of Rashford, Kane and Garnacho we had up top was looking relentless. But Man City were always two steps ahead of us. We now play Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium in the Premier League. With the points difference, we need to try and beat them if we want to win the Premier League. But sadly, once again, we had no answer for Man City. Honestly, guys, City have just been too dominant. We're missing way through the season, they're top of the league by five points. I really don't know if we've got what it takes to win the Premier League. On the other hand, the intensity of this title fight against City cost us in the Champions League. We only finished second in our group. Thankfully, though, we got lucky in the round of 16 and just about scraped through on penalties against Dortmund. In the quarterfinals, we drew AC Milan and we dispatched them. With that, we had made it to the Champions League semi-finals where we're up against Juventus and on the other side, it's Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Honestly, we're looking really good right now to win the Champions League. I guess we got really lucky that Man City bottled the Champions League and got knocked out in the group stages. But in the Premier League, it's still Manchester City doing everything to stop us from getting that treble. We've somehow managed to claw back the advantage and we're just two points behind them. If we can beat Man City, which by the way, we haven't done at all this season, we might actually defend our Premier League title. This time though against City, we're gonna have to do something different tactically. We can't keep going with the same formation, same tactics, and expecting the same result. With Mason Mount being suspended for this game, we're anyway forced to do something different. I think against this Superman City team, maybe a defensive approach is what we need. Scott McDominay, I'm gonna need you to destroy in that midfield. And it turns out a no-nonsense player like McDominay was exactly what we needed for this one. He did always get the ball, but he always got the man. But the truth is, just defending was not gonna get us the title. To win the Premier League, we needed to score. Oh, that's a brilliant cross and Harry Kane leaps and manages to score. Harry Kane with the goal. Come on. That one result against Man City has got us now in pole position to win the title. I mean, we're almost there. Meanwhile, the momentum also helped us knock out Juventus from the Champions League. We can literally dream of completing the treble now and it starts here at Wembley. First, we need to beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Chelsea were putting the pressure early on as Onana was forced to make a ridiculous save. Throughout this first half, it was Onana keeping us in this. The first half has come to an end and I'm really glad. We need to regroup for the second half, otherwise we're gonna lose this game. The second half was destined to go to extra time, but a certain former Chelsea player had the opportunity to settle the score. No way, Mason Mount could be through. No! Oh my god, we've done it! Mason Mount has scored against his former club. He doesn't celebrate, but he could win us the FA Cup. It's done full time and we've won the FA Cup. And there you go, we've won our first trophy of possibly three. And would you look at that, the Premier League has been secured as well. That's two titles now in two seasons. We've shown Man City that Manchester is red. And now only one game remains between us and a treble. It's the Champions League final against Barcelona. And there's a lot of history in this game. 2009, Barcelona beat Man United. 2011, 
Berlin, Barcelona beat Man United again. Surely this time we've got what it takes to beat Barcelona and win the Champions League. Honestly guys, this team that we've built is just insane and it's time to put them through their final test. Barcelona's midfield was trying their best to dominate this game, but thankfully we had Casemiro who had the experience in El Clasico's and was able to nullify that Barca midfield. But then towards the end of the half, we made a silly mistake. Come on, let's clear it away. What are you doing? No, no, no. That is such a silly goal to concede. That's half time, guys. Ah, it's so frustrating going 1-0 down. It should have been 0-0. With the lead, Barcelona were getting even more dominant. No, not again. No, how have we let him through Musiala again? Oh, we're 2-0 down 60 minutes into this game. I'm losing hope. The team is losing hope. All we need is one lucky chance. Bernardo's through, looking for Kane, and we get that one lucky goal. There is still a bit of hope. With just 10 minutes on the clock, it was now or never. Bruno with the dinged ball. Harry Kane has held him off, and he's actually scored. Can you believe it, guys? From 2-0 down, we're now level. Surely we've got to now win this. The late goal from Kane meant that this game's going no extra time. Barcelona actually scored an extra time, but thankfully it was offside. And finally, our perseverance paid off and we had that one chance. Time is running out. I do not want to risk penalties. Kado, oh, lovely flick. Mason mounts through and he's actually scored. Oh my days. Mason Mount has scored a Champions League winning goal. To think I criticized him at the start for being a Glazer signing, he's just almost won us the trophy. Even though we just had seven minutes left, Barcelona weren't done yet. Bonas put in, this is dangerous. Lewandowski's header saved by Onana. That is as good as the goal Mount scored. A title winning save. Just one minute to go and Barcelona are still piling up this pressure. It's unbelievable. Onana with the save. We've got the ball now we can't afford to lose it just take it wide run wide rashford seal this game yes we've won the champions league after being 2-0 down to barca the curse is over 2009 2011 we get revenge and we've completed the treble i still can't believe it was mount who scored in both cup finals for us that is crazy if you enjoyed this journey with manchester united i'm sure you'll enjoy me fix liverpool click here to watch that